Once again? Can you hear me? I can hear you just fine. I just got to turn you down a little bit. Okay. There we go. Okay, how are you doing today? I'm doing all right. I'm a little bummed about the tournament, but as you said, you know, I can't be too bummed since my fundamentals are a bit off. More yeah. than a bit off. We, we've got to teach you a few things, but no worries. I will help you out. So I'm going to show you how to zone. And wow. the most basic way of zoning is to get far away and throw a light fireball. And what's very important after this is that you follow it in. Have you ever played Street Fighter? Uh, like only 100 hours or so in five. Okay, are you familiar with Guile? Oh, yeah, unfortunately. <laughs> you, know, you know how if a Sonic Boom is basically anywhere on the screen, if you try to jump it, you're taking damage. Like, yeah. uh, unless the Guile messes up. Your Guile, that's you in this game. Okay. So what? So I'm. Go here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to throw a light fireball. I want you to try and get around it. Okay, sounds good. Oh, too far. <laughs> hmm. Damn, and I dropped the combo. <laughs> Also notice how if you block the fireball, I just get in. Yeah. Okay. I just got a bar from you for not doing anything. And so on. You see that? So mm -hmm. this is the basic way of using a character like Joe to win the neutral. Get far away, throw the light fireball, follow it in. And then if your opponent jumps or rolls in particular, look for the jump and the roll, punishing those. Okay. And with the jump, you can really answer here with whatever you want, but with practice, a DP or a super, this super is really good, would be really good to do. Uh, and Joe also has a slash kick that he can do. To uh, He can throw that like right after he throws this. Wow. So if they did okay. like jump it or roll it early, you could toss that out there. Like, like, it reaches this far for a reason. It's not to be mega unsafe. It's so you can use it out here. Um, hey, I see. So, like, all these pieces come together, and what you have to do is follow the light fireball and react to the situation. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. This is starting to make sense. I never realized slash kick was that. Yep. So, let's reverse the rolls. I want you to throw a light fireball. I'm going to try jumping and rolling. And I want you to punish those, if you can. Okay. Nope, that was bad on my end. Nice. Oops. Heavy fireball. Did you notice how much later you recovered on the heavy? Like, throw the heavy again? Yeah. You see how, how much recovery that has? This is why we throw the light one. The light one, you recover almost instantly, and because it's slower, you have time to follow it in. The heavy one, you can only throw aggressively, and you can't control the space as well. So, even if I'm all the way at the maximum distance, you can still run up and hit me. So make sure you run as soon as you recover. Like that run was a little slow. Fireball, run. I feel like I'm a little bit mm -hmm. low on that skill. Yep, just a little. You're getting there. Good. Do that again. Oops. Wrong version. Okay. Very good. Brave. Not what I wanted to mm -hmm. Very nice. Let's uh, reset the position here. Because it's training mode. Hey, oh. All right. You can even anti-air the neutral jump. If you run far enough and DP it, it totally works. 
Interesting. Yep. Well, that was it, definitely it's just a matter of you running fast enough and reacting fast enough. Like, keep running there. Like, DP a little later than that. A little I'm, slow on the kicks. Yeah, I'm a little behind on getting the info one. You should be able to just down forward since I yep. already have. Now you're running, so you're already holding forward. So all you have to do is input quarter forward kick because of the run. Okay. See that? All right, I see. Or really, it's just down, down forward, but you know, just whatever's more comfortable. So it's just about running fast enough. Oops. Oh, <laughs> Damn, that one hit me. Good. Now, if you ran a little bit further, you would have gotten all the hits on that DP. And I'm hitting this button because that's what you should be trying to beat with the DP. If I don't hit a button, then it doesn't count. You see that? Okay. My inputs are really messed up. Mm-hmm. This is where practice comes into play. So let's do it another 10, 20 times, whatever it takes. Why am I getting that? So the problem is the is the neutral. Like you're running and then you're stopping and inputting a quarter. So let me ask, are you on a control pad? Uh I'm on Mad Cat's T E plus arcade stick. You're on a T E plus, okay. I want you to look at my inputs here. I want you to pay close attention to those numbers. I was running for forty four and then one four. Like it was really quick. Three four. Three, three. Now, I'm just going to hold still. Go ahead and run up and DP me. All right. I want to see your inputs. Okay. Do that a couple more times. Oops. Okay. Yeah, like you just have to practice run up DP a little bit, right? Yeah, I just definitely gotta work on that. I'm not used to even on the double DP. I'm scared mm -hmm. to, you know, use that as an option. Now, I can see based on your inputs that the main issue is you're not really going for the down cleanly. So, I want you to pay attention to my inputs here. I run, I very briefly let go of the stick, and then I input quarter circle forward. Everyone can input quarter circle forward, right? It's not that hard. You can do that. So, forward, quarter circle forward. Forward, quarter circle forward. Holding forward, holding forward, quarter circle forward. Holding forward, quarter circle forward. Right? So, in a run, you'll do this exact same thing. You're just holding forward, quarter forward. Okay. What you want to practice is make sure that that neutral shows up. Forward, neutral, down. That is a clean down input. And then you can just focus on inputting a clean quarter forward. On your inputs, if you look closely, there's like forward, corner, down, corner, forward. Now that will technically work. Let's see. Like if you input forward and then corner and then down and then corner and then forward, if you input that quickly enough, like that will strictly speaking work, but just mm -hmm. neutral into quarter is easier and cleaner and, uh, and spends less time. So you're less likely to accidentally get other options. Okay. And, and you don't even need the forward. Technically, it's just down and down forward. Like, just, just like the Z motion, right? Mm -hmm. So, uh, I assume you haven't modified that stick. It has a square gate in it? Yeah. This is what the square is for. End in the corner. Huh. Like, pull the stick to the corner. Don't worry. You won't hurt the stick. So, like, um, like hold forward towards me and then try... Neutral, down, pull to the gate, press kick. Am 
I doing that right? I'm Marlis. getting extra inputs after, which is something that's kind of weird. Right. Uh, let's see. How long have you had this stick, by the way? Uh, maybe three years. I only used it for the last year, though. It was a gift, originally. Hmm, okay. I don't really think there'll be anything wrong. Like, sometimes you can get, like, this sometimes if the stick needs to be, like, replaced or if one of the switches is bad. Like, you can get mm -hmm. that by accident. But, uh... Uh, now the important thing here is that if you end on down forward or forward, that's a DP either way, as long as there's a forward in front of it, right? So let's try let's try the drill again. Throw a light fireball. I'm gonna neutral jump it. I'm gonna neutral jump it and try to run up and DP me. The important thing is if it looks like your character is pausing, you're not inputting the quarter forward kick fast enough. That was a good run, and then a bad DP. Very nice. Now I didn't stick that button out, so like, and this is why it's important that you run, because you can anti-air an empty jump and a button jump if you get to the right spot. But you have to not okay. stop. Like, look at my run. I didn't stop. Oh, wow. Do you it see that? Goes up Okay. Like, there's no stop. So this is why we have to work on your input. Because if you're running uh, quarter forward, then you can't get f far enough. Right. Yeah. So try it again. Almost. Perfect. That was excellent. Do that again. Mm, there was a stop there. Yep, good. See, now I'm not sticking the button out. I'm going to make you run further. Ooh, very good. Almost. A little slow on the DP. Yep. Oof. Oops. That was not as good as that. <laughs> Excellent. That was perfect. Ooh, not quite. So, I think you have the idea down. You may mm -hmm. you may just want to write this down, like because you, you can drill this. You can drill this with a CPU. What you can do is you set the you set the dummy like really far away to go like one, two, three, four, neutral jump. And the idea is, as oh. soon as they throw a jab, you throw your light fireball. Like you just have to time the the recording. So that the neutral jump is right before the fireball gets there, if that makes sense. Right. And then you okay. can then you can practice that. Like set the dummy to do like a neutral jump. One, two, three, four, neutral jump C D. And then also set them to just empty jump and see if you can anti-air that. Hmm. But the idea is if you can run far enough, you can DP any jump. If they hop at you, right. if they jump at you, super jump at you, neutral jump, like anything they do to get around that light fireball, you can score damage on. And then, when you get really good at that, they won't jump or roll anymore, and they will just block. And then, and that's, you, that's then you how you condition them, right? Yep, that's how you win the neutral and get pressure. Okay, so obviously the hard part of all this is you have to show them how good you are at this. So that's why when I throw a light fireball, sometimes you might think, "Oh no, what should I do?" Also, if they land in it, they're in a juggle state. You can totally get more. Hmm. Let's see. 
Do you know how to do a running throw? Uh, like this, right? Yep, run back heavy. So I want to try using that in a few mix-ups here because basically up close, when you would get close, you wouldn't often have like a plan, right? So go ahead and hold right. down, go ahead and hold down back for me and I'll give you some example mix-ups. Try to break these throws. Now, you're holding down back and pressing light punch that will not break a throw. Oh, I'm supposed to just be... Uh... A throw break is a throw input. You have to hold back or forward and press a heavy. Okay. Uh, you're pressing light punch still, so try heavy punch. Okay, my bad. Yeah, there we go. My reaction timing is so bad. Well, here's the thing. Don't react to the throw. You know exactly when I'm going to get there, right? Like, here I'm not going to throw. There's a throw. Like, the throw can only happen when I'm smelling your breath. So you just press back heavy when I get there. Does that make sense? Okay. I, I see how this is. But that, that's the mix-up, though. That's the mix-up. That's correct. Because if you press that back heavy every time I get close, then you might get hit. Right, right, right. <laughs> enough. Damn. Damn. Somehow. Sangi, you have to stand up to take a throw, so not, not precisely. So, what one thing that you can do, like, you may want to practice breaking throws, by the way. Like, just record the dummy to do this and see if you can actually just break the throw a little bit. Right. Um, but the way pressure works in KOF, like, like we were talking about zoning. So go ahead and just block. If I throw this fireball and you block it, so what now? Well, you have frame advantage and you can stop me. Well, it, like, if you threw a fireball at me and I guard it, you can beat all my buttons. You can. You just have to have a plan for when exactly you think I'm going to press that button. So I'll give you the most basic example. I want you to block the fireball and then start mashing. Not a DP, but just like mashing like light normals or something. The basic example is just heavy kick. But you don't have to use heavy kick. You can use basically anything, and CD will get you a nice good reward as well. Hmm. Nice. Now the thing is, if you try to go for a throw and they mash, they will win. Because when they come out of block stun in KOF, you actually have throw invincibility. Like, go ahead and hold down back for me and just keep holding it. Uh... Um, hold, hold back. Stand up and block. Like, notice I'm doing a jumping light kick, and then I'm walking into your body, and I'm still not getting throw. Right. So there's throw invincibility coming out of basically everything in KOF. So if I did this, you can actually mash there. Like, I want you to block this jump in, and then start mashing. Huh. 
Like, the thing is, I can't throw you, but the block stun has ended. Does that make sense? Like, there's extra throw invincibility after block stun in KOF. Right. So when I jump in and do this, what I'm trying to do is decide, will you keep blocking? So I should go for another jump in or go for a throw. Or will you try to attack during that early throw invincible period? And will I try to beat that? That's how the KOF mix-up works. Does that make sense? Yeah. That, so like, that's weird. That's a lot of classic fighting games were like this. Like In a lot of modern fighting games, when you get up or come out of block stun, you can be hit or thrown like at the same time. But in a lot of classic fighting games, you have extra throw invincibility first. So the idea is, the only way I'm going to throw you is if you choose to sit still and press nothing and do nothing. That's when I will be able to throw you. So, so basically, yeah. as the defender, I should always press, or at least have a plan? You should press if you think I'm going to throw. Right. Like, that's the read. Like, if you think I'm going to attack, you should block. If you think I'm going to throw, you should attack. <laughs> And, if, and now the thing is, if you think I'm going to attack or throw, then a DP could be both. But then I could block that. Right. But then you also have guard cancels. And you also have backdash. Mm. And so on. So, like, here's the, here's the next example. I'm going to do this jump in again. And I want you to start mashing. So... If I if I I put you in block stun and then if you're gonna mash I attack to beat your attack. If you're not mm. gonna mash then I go for throw or I keep attacking your guard. Does that make sense? Look look at your guard gauge. Oh man. So the basic idea with KOF is if your opponent isn't doing anything, then you can throw them or go for guard break. Right. And you can beat these, by the way. Like, I, I can't ever force you to block two of these, right? So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to keep doing hop CDs. All you have to do is, like, hit a standing button of some kind. Oops. Wow, this is actually a Joe weakness, possibly. Um, try close heavy punch. Uh, and try, wow. Yeah, Joe's buttons are actually bad against Joe up close. Um, so, I mean, in this case, after you block one, you could also try to roll, and it wouldn't be a guard cancel roll, you would just roll out. Like block one and then try to roll forward. See? Okay. Like, the important thing about KOF is if it feels like you're under pressure, the block stun doesn't actually last as long as it feels. It's just that you have to make a decision. A decision is required of you. You can choose to do nothing, but that's up to you. Or you can choose to try and escape a repeated jump, or you can try and DP. Like, go, you can block one of these and then go for a DP. And that would beat the next one, right? But not if I'm too close, because Joe's travels like forward horizontally, right? So this is where matchup details start coming into play. Some DPs would go straight up, for example. <coughs> Excuse me. But yeah, effectively, I think maybe you know or knew some of this, possibly, but you're not putting any of it into practice is the thing. When I blocked your attacks, I felt like I could just mash on backdash or mash on backwards roll, and I would just escape, right? right. So we, you have to learn how to get pressure by winning neutral and then how to keep pressure. And the way that you keep pressure is by continuing to rush them down and having answers for their defense. Mm. Um, and that is, you know, a larger topic. But in effect, it's about making calls. Um, like, go ahead and hold down back. This is a common string you might see in like another fighting game. Okay. Wait. Eh. I'm gonna do some lights, and then I'll do a trip. I'm safe. Now in KOF. Really? Yeah, you're safe, but who cares? 
Does that make sense? Uh, in, okay. K in KOF, if you think they're going to block your trip, then don't do the trip. Throw them. Like, if you think that they are willing to continue blocking, then take advantage of it. Does that make sense? Okay, yeah. I'm starting to get it a little bit. So you have to put offense out there. Doing your safe strings into safety, into zoning again, is not offense. Unless your opponent is getting hit by every single fireball and anti-air that you do. Right. So what you have to do is learn how to create pressure. And the pressure comes from you going for mix-ups. And you going for mix-ups means not doing your silly safe light light trip string does that make sense <laughs> right 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 so and that, that's how it all blends together and that's where that's where the game speed comes from and the decision making so try and rush me down let's see what okay. you choose Oh no, my defense is too strong. Whoa, what the? How mm -hmm. did I get that in? Yeah. How am I getting DP? Uh, you're inputting a quarter forward after your run somehow. So I'll give you an example. Go ahead and hold down back. And I'm just gonna do some lights. After you block these, start mashing crouching heavy kick. Okay, I see. So I now here's the thing, like you have to not wait. I input crouch light kick and then I input hop. I'm. This is a blind read. I'm not waiting to see anything. Does that make sense? I'm thinking you're going to trip. And then I do my jump in, and then when it hits, I hit confirm it. So mm. go, go ahead and try that. Do two crouching light kicks, and then immediately hop and punish me hard. Basically, you're inputting the up forward too late. Like you're like you're waiting too long. Good, but that was accidentally like a hyper hop, I think. <laughs> yeah. So now you have to so now what we have to work on then is getting your hops to work. Now, it seems like you can do a hop, but if as but what is it about hitting crouching light kick that makes you forget how to do this? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. You just have to put the pieces together. No combo. Now, I, I want to point something out. It took you some practice to get to this hop heavy kick. But if this happened in a match, that would signal to me that I should keep mashing trip. Because if right. you don't punish me for a combo, then it's not really that risky. 
And so this is sort of the uphill climb of KOF is I can do A or I can do B or I can do C or D or E or F. Your goal is to be able to discourage me away from those things with combos. <laughs> Just hitting me is not going to be good enough in general. Like it sort of depends on what it is. Like if I hyper hop a lot, but you keep meeting me midair, like with the DP or something, that's pretty good discouragement. But if I'm like mashing on defense, if you can get a combo, that might make me stop mashing. And if I don't stop mashing, you just do it again, just like you practiced. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Like you want to you want to have it so that any choice that I can make, you can blow up with a combo. And for that, you have to practice a little bit. But that's right. where we are right now. So go ahead and try it one more time. I want to see you land this combo. And and do, do what's the combo gonna be? Uh, you want me to just do it? Yeah, do the combo. <laughs> or like we can just start with this one okay. just the basic joe combo right so that's the one that you're trying to land see if you can land it Oops, too slow Almost. God, crush. <laughs> I hope you. I hope you had health left in that round. Otherwise, you just killed yeah. yourself. You know, and th this is another aspect of, you know, don't drop your combos because all sorts of other stuff. But, you know, yeah, so Joe has some fun, complicated stuff in the corner. Sure. But fundamentally speaking, it's very important that you can do this. Because then you can punish a mistake or a mash or something hard, like really, really heavily hard. You press crouching D. OK, die 60%. Um, and so this is sort of where the challenge of KOF comes from. It's when you're zoning, can you react to everything that your opponent does? If you're not zoning, what should you do in neutral? You have lots of choices. What should you do? There isn't really a right answer. The right answer is whatever works and also doesn't get you killed. And then up close, can you discourage them from pressing buttons? If so, do you go for guard breaks? Do you go for throws? You know, how do you want to organize your offense? And that's sort of up to you. If you watch Reynald's show, for example, he doesn't bother with any of the up-close offense, almost, for the most part. He just focuses entirely on safe heavy kick pressure. And then he'll sort of mix that up there. Because after you block the heavy kick, it's like, okay, maybe I should jump now. And... Like, there's, there's, there's like a little neutral mix-up that you can do. Heavy kick is blocked. Okay, what do we want to do right now in this moment? And I might just read what you do there. Does that make sense? Okay. Huh. So, I guess before we go any further, do you have any questions? Uh, um, to, just like in general, I need um to get my like. Just I gotta get things down. I feel like because yes. when when I have the right idea, I'm usually not able to capitalize on it the way I do in my head, right? Because I'm, I'm thinking too much during play, mm -hmm. and then it just leads to me overthinking and just not doing anything at all, and that's how I get the, you know, you know, that just, it just doesn't come out, you know what I mean? Like, Yep, I'm glad you said it and not me, because that's, that's the issue with a lot of players. They, they'll have an idea, they'll have a theory for what they're going to do, and then they'll fail to mm -hmm. execute it, and then their mental stack will just topple, and they'll just be like, well, what do I do? And then they end up right. doing nothing, and yeah. So you have to get things down. This game is, uh, I don't know if you've ever played like Virtua Fighter, by any chance, but uh, it's uh, like not not much. 
Okay, yeah, no worries. It's like a hyper fast game. It's similar to KOF in terms of pacing. And anytime you spend thinking about what you're doing is like frames wasted that don't work in your mix-ups and so on. <laughs> okay. So now KOF, you don't necessarily have to play at a mile a minute. You don't have to go, I'm coming in, I'm pressing buttons, I'm going for throw. Like you don't necessarily have to play it that way, but that is the right way to play against overly defensive opponents. Sometimes. Depends on if they're trying to bait you with their defense or not. Like there's lots of ifs, ands, buts. There's lots of nuance in there. You can play it slow. You can play it fast. What should you do? depends on the opponent really um but if you don't have your stuff down then in the moment you're gonna miss that running throw in the moment you're gonna be like oh no i didn't run far enough oh no i didn't run far enough i'm gonna run up light and then you whiff against a rolf and he hits crouching heavy punch and then you die yep. so having all your stuff as much as possible practiced ahead of time and having your strategies in mind as you play makes it easier to adapt and makes it easier to actually try to outplay your opponent but that takes right. time and that's why we call it an experience game mm -hmm. I'm, like i said earlier i'm willing to put all the effort and time i have to it. i don't care it's an uphill battle for me mm -hmm. all right cool that's great um now like there's similar stuff that we can do with like your cronin or your uh or your uh kukri but I think I've shown you, like, a good amount of, like, how you can use, like, Rushdown and, like, how to think about, mm -hmm. like, how to zone and stuff. So I think, like, this is enough for now. And uh, hopefully maybe you have some notes. And by the way, I might upload, like, this little training session up to YouTube with your permission. Just, like, show people how I do some coaching, oh, of right? Of course. Yeah, of course. Uh, but, like, the idea is I think if you now watch other Kukri's play or watch other Cronin's play, maybe you'll understand a little bit more about why they do the stuff they do. Right. Maybe. And, like, if you have more questions, you know, just drop by any time. I appreciate everything, Juice. Seriously, I genuinely appreciate all of this. And I'm going to hit the lab the second I end this call. Oh. All right. That sounds awesome. Uh, so, yeah, um, have fun. I'm going to get back to the stream, but uh, thanks a lot. Thank you. Have a good one. Yep, you too. So, for everyone who's watching on the stream, that's how I coach. And depending on exactly like weaknesses and other things that you might have, I would cover different topics, but that's, uh, that's basically how it goes. <laughs>